we are a bilingual, trilingual people. <coughs> it's famously said that we have a language for prayer, we have a language to speak to our mothers and to dream in, we have a language for wow. uh, talking outside. And this true. is the true strength of India. I mean, your respect for uh, for the indigenous voice, so to speak, for uh, uh, for a language that you might not necessarily speak or understand, and yet um, yet get the beauty of, which is uh, which is also a role that you play to perfection at the Jaipur Literature Festival. And there are many voices that are not speaking in the so-called mainstream languages that uh, you have taken it upon yourself to. Uh, uh, to get people to know more of it, be it'd be great to know the process of of choice there. I don't know what is the process of choice. I keep watching out, listening in, but in, not even consciously. Things come to me. Sure. So um, yesterday, for example, I had a session. Uh, it was called Jaipur Nama, the return to the mother tongue, and it was about two of my translators into Hindi in conversation with me. It was a riot. Because my cousin Pushpesh Pant was on stage with me. Wow. He is very funny yeah. and very bright. And he had translated things to leave behind, which gets the Sahitya Academy Award today, into Hindi as Raag Pahari. And there is Prabhat Ranjan, who had, who's just translated my new novel, uh, which is called uh, The Blind Matriarch. And he's translated it as Andhari. Oh, what a beautiful wow, what name, Andhari. Beautiful. So, we were talking about the process with Rakshanda Jalil of how you take a language and return it back to the language where it is emotionally and geographically located. And the audience was enthused. I asked them in the very beginning that those of you who are bilingual, please put your hand up. And I think almost every hand in the audience was. We are a bilingual, trilingual people. <coughs> It's famously said that we have a language for prayer, we have a language to speak to our mothers and to dream in, we have a language for wow. uh, talking outside and this true. is the true strength of India. So. Absolutely. Uh, but there's also increasingly uh, being seen, I, and I, I don't know if you'll agree or not, but um, language is becoming uh, subservient to an agenda. Even uh, even the geographical location of languages are being, for lack of a better way of explaining it, weaponized. It's always been. The it's case. always been. We had a session yesterday. Right. Sorry to go back, but please. The festival is where we are. Yes. And Rashmi Dorai Swami, who teaches Russian in Jain, you used to now in Jamia. And I'd been with her once to address a meeting of writers from the former Soviet Union. And in that meeting, I, I was struck by the fact that the end of all this thing where everybody asserted their nationality and their local language, a woman from Kyrgyzstan, after the session was over, over a cup of tea, she said, nobody said the most important thing, that all of us have issues with Russia, perhaps, but we love the Russian language because it is a great literary language and so what she and Ukrainian and Russian is so close to each other in literary terms sure. and yet it has been weaponized yeah. uh, into this situation and there's another set of two writers here uh, uh. both write in Nepali oh. Nepali is spoken more in it is one of our Indian languages there are more Nepali speakers in India than they are in Nepal really? Oh, yes. wow. okay. And uh, one of them has written a book called Son of the Soil, Songs of the Soil, Songs of the Soil. which I blurbed. They sent it to me to blurb. I see. And so I blurbed it and I knew this is a winner. So he's here and it became a winner after I first read that draft. Sure. That book, I mean, I'm giving you the history, not sure. of my process, but the larger process in which I am privileged to participate. Of course. This book was translated by um, somebody called Ajit Baral. I who see. heads a fine print publishing in Nepal. I see. Yeah. And he's done a beautiful translation. He translated it into English and I blurbed it. Uh, Vani has published it in Hindi and it's out in Bangla. Wow. And it has got a UK publisher already. It's been out for two months. Wow. And there's a very uh, well-known UK publisher, I think it's Baliste, who has published it in the UK. So it's just found its way in the world. And he was delighted because the fact that I could write about it here and there, it just made it, give it that visibility. Absolutely. But it's a great book. It has, Absolutely. it's found its own way. Absolutely.